Have you ever tried to photograph something majestic and grand, but your picture just didn't do it justice? Things maybe appeared smaller or bigger than they were supposed to. That's a problem sometimes when photographing interiors, to show scale. So in this video, I'll show you some examples and show you a scene where I also need to do the interior size some justice. I have done this a few times over the years and in different locations all around the world. Here are some of those examples. I think they achieve the desired outcome, which of course is to show scale. Placing myself in the scene in this former car manufacturing plant in Germany, and again in this huge hospital chapel in Northern Italy. And again, myself in a bag in a ginormous abandoned church in Belgium. But it doesn't always have to be you. So here's Jade, close to the edge in red, in a dark industrial location in Hungary. And even on a recent trip to Mymar, here's Jade in red sitting on a white pagoda. And again, standing small this time among giant temple ruins. So at times when you're photographing scenes like architecture, structures, it's difficult to convey to those people looking at your image the sense of scale or the size of the subject, particularly when the main element of your shot is big, such as this dome here. So one technique to give scale to your image is to give the viewer a point of reference, add something into the scene that they're familiar with the size of, something like a human, including a person into your shot will instantly give the viewer a good point of reference. So everybody knows the average size of a human. Placing a human into a scene like this instantly gives the viewer some sort of recognition that they understand the size and the scale of the architecture. So adding a person, of course, into a scene has been a great tool to keep in your arsenal when photographing architecture. Okay, so say hello to Jade. This is Jade. Today, she's not in a dress, she's in camo gear. I've demanded that she's wearing something like this, a bit more explorer-like to place her into my photograph of this dome. This is actually an abandoned reservoir here in Georgia. And I think it would add a nice sense of scale to my shot. Also, we're gonna to have to react to the light as we go. So you're gonna see it literally live. So let's grab this and see what we can make. Okay, this is getting really difficult because one, I keep messing up the sound, two, uh, my composition's a nightmare, and three, the sun is also a nightmare. We've had a problem with the light beam, um, the time of day it is, and the light beam coming over the dome. We thought it comes directly above. Turns out it's actually right across the back of the dome here now. So we've lost all the light beam, which, eh, whatever. End of the day, we're trying, to, we're trying to show you scale, and it looks fantastic with Jade in the center. And you can see Jade just there waving away. I've composed a shot nicely here. It's taken quite some time to battle and get this right. So I'm going to show you what we're doing and then we're going to move Jade around and get a few you know, examples of this shot. We'll show you them all. So first, first thing I've done is I've angled my camera nice and high. I'm shooting towards the ceiling where the subject is and putting Jade on the rule of thirds at the bottom line. So it looks really cool composition. And it looks fantastic. My settings are a bit interesting uh, because obviously we don't want Jade standing still, even though she is patiently there, uh, for ages. So we're trying to do ISO 640, nice low f-stop so that the shutter speed is as quick as it can be, but without it being ridiculous. I'm using a 16 to 35 mil lens. We're just gonna explain to Jade what we're doing. So Jade, we're now about to shoot. It's on a two second timer. And Jade's got a couple of poses ready to roll. And that's it, three brackets I'm shooting, by the way, just so that we can uh, choose afterwards and we can then maybe blend in some of the dome if we need to. I might even, after this, actually get a shot without moving the tripod of just the dome in position at a 
larger f-stop maybe f8 f7.1 to get it even sharper but for now we're just going to do a few variants of jade this is a cool one yeah i like that one okay so i haven't moved the tripod but jade is now out of the scene to, altogether another trick that i sometimes use is actually to then change my settings and photograph the architecture and it gives me the ability to be able to blend jade with the subject at a later date in post-processing if i need to and why I would do that is because obviously I've focused on jade and then the architecture is out of focus in some instances. I don't particularly think she was near enough to the camera to make a big difference, but sometimes it's really nice just to double check, shoot the architecture, F8, F7.1 with jade not in the scene. And if we need to, if any of it's soft, we can then blend it in in our post-processing. So to do that, I'm just lowering my ISO back down. I'm actually only gonna go as low as 200 because it's still a dark room, right? Still got three rackets. But this time I'm focusing on the ceiling, not on Jade. She's doing a reach pose now that you see there. Um, you've got to remember as well, we've been in these locations quite a bit. So there are certain poses, especially in the combat gear, that work really well. And obviously she's choosing ones that we know work for this location. I'm going back to portrait now because Jade was doing a reach pose a second ago. So we're going to get her to do that again. Jade, if you can do the reach pose, because I think it looked better in portrait mode because it looks through the photo. Angling through, it does. It looks a lot better. We need to shuffle to the right a little bit for me. That's it. The other thing to bear in mind, so that's just shooting behind me now. <laughs> Jade stays post. Um, you've got to remember as well, is when I'm saying to my right, Jade understands, because we've worked together quite a lot, so it's easy for me to say camera right, move right, and she's moving right within my scene, not her left and right, so that's working quite well. Little did I know that a few weeks later we would discover another location that required some use of scale. Oh, it looks cool. Unfortunately, it was incredibly dark here, so filming was hard work. However, I think it still shows even with longer exposures, adding a person can really give you that sense of what you're looking for. Ooh. 